Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about my Fender Supersonic 22. Now there's a bunch of questions about this. Somebody had noticed that I had a Supersonic 22 head and a combo and they were wondering what was up with that. Well, here's what's up with that. I actually own both. I have a two story house. So what happens is when I'm downstairs, sometimes the kids and the family's upstairs and vice versa. So I have a combo downstairs so I can play. The combo is the Supersonic 22. And then because I like it so much, I have the head upstairs. Now I don't need a combo upstairs um, because you know, I have these cabinets. So essentially I just have two rigs. I have the rig downstairs and this rig upstairs. So that's why I've done it this way. They're identical in every way. In fact, the head is not a version of the combo. It is just the combo cut. They just cut it. Now, the other reason I did that was I got a deal on the head. So it was easier to do it that way. Otherwise I probably would have just got two combos, but uh, I got a, you know, a deal on the head. So um, let's explain a couple things about this. Now, the first thing you, I want you to understand is there is a global reverb. So there's one reverb control, check that out, for both the, um, the gain and the clean channel, and you can foot switchable, turn that on and off, which is a cool feature. Now, if we look at the clean channel, you'll notice you'll have a volume, a treble, and a bass. It's very self-explanatory, but then you get a cool feature, normal and fat. Normal has this kind of typical Fender sound like this. After you get that kind of cool Fender sound, you may want something a little bigger, kind of more reminiscent of like the newer kind of Mesa Boogie, kind of newer, uh, bigger, more modern amplifier clean. So when you hit that fat mode, you get a thicker, fuller, more bass response. Now it's not just bass response, there is a kind of fullness to the sound, which is a really cool sound. Check it out right here. Having those two sounds is already pretty cool, but then they went ahead and added a MIDI foot switch. Now it's a MIDI controllable foot switch, comes with the amp, and the features on it is you can twin, you can change between the dirty and clean channel, and you can toggle between those two versions of the clean channel. You can turn off the reverb on and off, and you can turn the effects loop on and off, and the effects loop is one I want to talk about right now. One of the things I like to do is put a looping pedal in the combo downstairs, and what I will do is I will loop the normal channel and then when I want to lead on that after I play the loop I engage the the fat channel for a thicker fatter tone to play the the single notes on top of check that out right here In addition to this, because the actual uh, loop pedal is in the effects loop, you can even change channels on the amp. It won't affect anything. So I can loop the clean channel in the amp, either version, and then switch over to the overdrive channel and then put uh, even a overdrive lead on top of that clean, or even if I want to stack lead on top of, you know, lead. But let's check out what it sounds like with a clean loop with some overdrive. <laughs> Now the other cool feature in the amp is because like I said, the effects loop has this switch that's built into it. You can turn the effects loop on and off. And the reason why that might be important is not only because you may want to bypass the looper out of the loop entirely, but also what you can do is add other effects uh, to the amp and then control them on and off. In other words, leave them on. So for instance, let's say you want to do a solo with delay and chorus at the same time. You could leave those pedals on, right? And then uh, the effects loop is disengaged. So even though those pedals are on, you can't hear them because they're not coming through the amp. Now the amp has some basic controls. Uh, we can check them out. There's basically, the clean channel has a volume, treble, and a bass. That's pretty typical of a Fender amp. The gain channel will have a treble, bass, middle, which is mid-range, and of course volume. And like I said before, the reverb is global. In other words, it's, it affects both channels the same, but you can turn it on and off via the foot switch. But then you have two gains and these are stackable gains. So what I'm gonna do is take gain two and turn it off and gain one. And this is what, well. And then of course you can go ahead and turn that up. Now, Now, the gains are not foot switchable. That would be an amazing feature in the amp to be able to turn those on and off on the uh, Supersonic 22, but it's just not in the cards. Um, I like to kind of just set them where I like them and just leave them, right? 
And I like the gain one to be at about a seven and the gain two at about six. I think that's right. I know that sounds weird. I, what I like about this amp is those two gain controls. Check them out right here, just the two gains. Um, you could even do this crazy thing where I put gain one on four and gain one on seven and it'll sound like this. There's so many combinations that you can mess with these two gains is where I think I got addicted to it. Um, gain one tends to have the crunch, but gain two has the fizz. And sometimes you don't want the fizz, uh, that kind of fuzziness at the end of a distortion. So by taking gain two to zero and gain one to 10, you'll get that crunch that you're used to, what I call like, you know, right, that crunchy sound, but no fizz. Check it out. <laughs> Well, now we've kind of explored the different gain positions. Let's just put gain one and two at 10 and see what the amp does. We're not gonna scoop the EQ, we'll leave it flat. So EQ straight up at, uh, at 12 o'clock on all three EQ controls and both gains are on 10 and this is what the amp sounds mean and dirty. not mean enough for you. Well, if you have a Boss EQ, a MXR EQ, a little Fender EQ, any kind of EQ pedal, you put it through the effects loop, you dial in the, uh, the EQ range you want. I'm gonna go for a more of a mid-scoop kind of metal sound and watch what happens when I don't change anything. Again, the three band EQ on the amp is straight up. The gains are on uh, 10 each, so there we're, we're still haul ball, hauls balls out, you know, kind of gain. And watch what the EQ does to this amp. See how mean and, and kind of metal -y the amp gets. I know what you're thinking, but what about a Tube Screamer? What happens if you put a pedal in front of it? Well, obviously it's a Fender amp. So in the clean channel, you can put whatever pedals you want in front of it. There's no reason to demo that because again, all Fender amps take pedals well. But how does this amp react to, let's say the classic Tube Screamer? So what I'm gonna use is a, Fen uh, not Fender, an Ibanez Tube Screamer, and we're gonna put it through the amp with the gain one on 12 o'clock straight up and gain two off. So this is the amp uh, halfway. We'll actually, I'll actually play it for a second and then I'll engage that Tube Screamer and you'll see what happens to the amp with the Tube Screamer engage, push in the amp, so to speak. <laughs> the channel for any length of time you know that I've had a bunch of amps and I continue to keep some and some cycle out and uh, I've owned a bunch of Fender amps and keep in mind I just want to make it very clear on this I have owned a bunch of Fender amps I love the Hot Rod Deluxe I love the Princeton Reverb 68 I love a lot of amps and what happened was this ex uh, kind of exploring through the Fender amps led me back to the Supersonic 22 the interesting story in this is I owned a Supersonic 22 about five years ago and I really enjoyed it when it first came out however it had a glitch when you switch between channel two, the gain channel to clean, it popped. I contacted Fender, the tech support told me that it was a relay popping, it's a design flaw and I'm stuck with it. I kinda 
kind of got upset. I thought that was irritating for a thousand dollar amp to have a design flaw and them not to care. So I sold mine off. Uh, because the pop kind of got on my nerves. And then what happened was, through this ex exploring all these amps, the, one of my favorite Fender amps is the Super Champ X2. I just really enjoy it. For practice at home, I still have one. I actually have two. I have the combo and the head version of that. And um, I really like that amp a lot. Um, it's inexpensive. It's good. It's, 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 I mean, it's not much more than expensive boutique pedals, you know, right? Um, but I was looking for something a little bit different, a little bit more high-end, and so I go, you know what? I think I'm gonna go back to it and just get over the popping sound. So when I got one, it didn't make a pop sound. I don't know what that is. I don't know if they changed it, but both the amps I have do not make the pop sound. I do not know if that sound has been resolved. I just know that the two amps I have have not done it. And so you, so we're very clear on the amp that did it before, when I, five years ago. Um, I actually uh, sent it back for warranty, got another one, and the new one did it. And that's when I knew to call them, and they told me that they were aware of the issue. It is what it is. So I don't think it is what it is. I think they fixed it. So I think they fixed it. So if you have the issue, I'm sorry. And if you don't, then, you know, let's say they fixed it. So very cool amp. What I think is this. Um, I think the clean channel on this is not as good as... Uh, that 60, the 68 Princeton had a better clean. I liked it. The, I think the Hot Rod Deluxe has a better clean than this, fuller, bigger. Um, it, it, it definitely doesn't win against those guys. It's just a good clean. I like this uh, clean on this though, me personally, better than the 65 Deluxe Reverb. Um, uh, the 68 Deluxe Reverb, I think I like that clean a little better than this. However, what I want to point out is neither one of those amps and none of those amps that I've discussed have a distortion or overdrive channel as good as this amp, in my opinion. So I like the overdrive panel on this amp. What I decided was, was this amp is so versatile that I just want to stick with this for a while uh, until I can find something that maybe suits my needs better, but I just don't know. The only downgrade I have on it is that it's kind of small. Keep in mind that this Keep in mind that this amp right here next to it is 25 watts and this is 22 and it has this even has more features than this However, this has the fender tone and I do prefer this if you were gonna ask me which one would I keep of the two I would probably keep the supersonic 22 In fact, the only thing that makes the supersonic 22 not in my opinion not as good as the mark 5 is that it's so much bigger uh, For you know, basically the same size amp so something to check out. Last, I want to end with a cool little montage. These are all the sounds I could pull out of it with all the different guitars I could find. So let's do some cool guitars, different sounds, see what the amp's capable of, and we'll leave you with that. <laughs> Well, I hope you had fun. I sure did. As always, if you like the video and you'd like to see more, hit subscribe so you can get notified when I do more. If you like the videos, hit like. And if you have comments, please put comments. Put your good experiences. Uh, put the difficulties you've had with the amp. If you've had experience with the amp. Uh, any questions you have, put about the amp. If I can't get to them, trust me, other viewers know a lot as well and they like to comment on there. We'd like to build a little community on this channel. So please leave comments because uh, it's just something cool to check out for everyone to know where everybody's thinking. As always, thank you for your time and know your gear.